Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Midwest Meltdown. It's your boy, Zach. It's Josh. Today's episode is brought to you by Podgo. Podgo is the easiest way for you to monetize your podcast. Hell, if you guys don't know by now that Podgo is amazing, I guess we're just going to tell you one more time. But they provide podga- podcasters with a flat rate for ad space, so you always know how much you get when you get an ad from Podgo. Apply today to become a member and immediately be connected to advertisers that fit your audience. And if you do, don't forget to tell them that the Meltdown sent you. So go to podgo.co at P-O-D-G-O dot C-O. Staple as always, Podgo on the Midwest Meltdown. I also want to throw in there, this episode is also brought to you by Tums. If you're having some pod gas, um, Tums is the way to go. What? Right, Josh? You said pod gas, but then you corrected <laughs> yourself to podcast. You're so, you're Play the so tape so back. So Play it back in the booth. Everybody heard it. I did not say podcast. Stumble, you stumbled. I did not say it. Yeah, you did. We all heard it. Everybody's going to hear it. And don't you dare fucking edit it out. Oh, I guess that's up to me for you to find out. Yeah, great. This whole, <laughs> this whole segment will be me saying it. And it's just going to go. It's going to be so funny how you're like, this episode is brought to you by blah, 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 podcast, podcast. Like, it's going to be like a weird blip. And I'll be like, you son of a bitch. And you're going to look like a crazy person. I know. All right. I have a story to tell you that I was talking about. I was going to tell you before the episode, but I'm like, again, we can't tell each other shit anymore because we won't have stuff to talk about on this show. Okay. 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 So there was there's a show that Teague's been watching, um, basically where a, a film crew is uh, following, like interviewing people who are on the spectrum with autism and basically helping them like find love. So there's like love coaches who are helping People with this type of disability obviously try to find love. So they try to find people who okay. are both like What's both. What's the show called? Oh, shit. To be honest, I don't know. It's on Netflix. I know that. All right. It's based in the UK and Australia. And I'm pretty sure you can narrow it down. Um, okay, you figure it out. Or you keep talking and I'll figure it out. Okay. So, well, I need you to pay attention because it's a funny story. No, I'm, I, I'm, I can do that. So the the uh, couple goes out to a restaurant start eating and they're sitting there they're talking just kind of like getting to know each other and stuff and love the one, on the spectrum there you go love on the spectrum and uh as they're sitting down talking and stuff the guy's like oh you know like what do you like to do and stuff and the girl goes oh i like to play video games and he's like oh that's so cool like i play video games too like what what kind of games do you like to play and she goes well i'm a really big fan of skyrim and he goes oh really and mid dinner Dude turns to his left, spots a piano in the restaurant, and starts busting out some fucking Skyrim theme to her. Ultimate flex, and then he whipped out his big hog. <laughs> like in the like, the funniest part though is as I'm listening to it, you what he does is he picks like you can hear some elements of the theme, but then like because later I was like, there's other parts of it where I was like. I don't think that's part of the song. And then he just goes, yeah, that was Skyrim with a little bit of my own improvisation. And I was like, ah, there it is. Cause I was like, I'm like, that's I'm like, it sounds right. But then there are parts that didn't sound right. Um, but I'm like, what a boss ass move. Seriously. That's, that's a fucking flex right there. Seriously. Like mid dinner, just like, Oh, you like Skyrim knuckle crack. Like just starts going ham, and I was like, "You've got to be shitting me!" <laughs> like the balls you have to have, and again, mid like full restaurant, like the oh, for balls. Sure. I was like, "Well done, dude!" Like seriously, super big flex move. Um, honestly, that was I was like, that was fucking that was pretty cool. Yeah, I figured cool. you know you being a a a fan of Skyrim, figured you might appreciate a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, would you look okay. at that? Oh, Jesus Christ! Okay. No, it's it's cool. God, it's all right. cool. It was cool. It was it was actually it was really cool. And like the show itself is actually really funny and stuff. Um, and uh, like I said, Teague's been really into it and stuff. And it's actually like really entertaining. If you guys want to check it out, what was it called again, Josh? On the spectrum. Love, Love on, the, on spectrum. the spectrum. Love on the spectrum. There it is. Um, also continuing on here, I messaged you and I told you to kind of keep in mind what game you're going to play next because I want. Mm -hmm. I want this to be out there, dude. I have so many games in my head that I want to talk about on this freaking show, but I can't because I'm waiting. Give a hard life because I'm waiting on you. Yeah, I do. 
I want to talk about these things on our video game podcast, and I can't. Because you're too busy playing Super 8 Ball or whatever the fuck you're playing now. That's a good game. Maybe you should play that. Is that really actually the name of the game? I totally guessed. It's like, I don't know, Pool Ball or something? I don't fucking know. You don't even know. It's so minor, you don't even know. Bitch, you couldn't even remember the name of the show you were watching. And then I told you, and then you didn't remember. I wasn't later. watching it. I came in. T wanted to show me a You clip. weren't watching it. You were, we're at five minutes and 30 seconds. And after, what, one minute when the ad read was done, you were talking about that show. And you're about to tell me that you weren't watching the show. You I just told watched, a four-minute story about the show. I watched I watched the clip that Teague, you you made it seem like, though, that since I didn't know the title, it was dumb because I'm, like, actively watching it. I watched well, the I clip that Well, I also commented on the fact me. that I told you the name of the title, and then two minutes later, you had already forgotten the name of the title. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's given at this point. No, it's not. It is, though. That's the thing. Nor all, should it be. Everybody knows that. Everybody what, does. That your brain doesn't work? Yes. Wait, what? <laughs> I'm too stupid to make up my own mind. Classic Peter Griffin. Classic Peter Griffin. Now you got that <laughs> song stuck in my head. Played it right before this freaking episode started. I knew it was going to happen. Well, okay, what what question do you want to know the answer to? When you get your fucking PS5, okay. what game are you going to play that we can both talk about collectively on this show? Like a story-driven game. See, I, yeah, okay, you sent me this message today, and you're like, but not what the actual answer is. No, 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 because I have Because I'm going to played... finish playing Tony Hawk. Great, that's fine. At a certain point, though, it's like it's it's the, it's Tony Hawk. Like you, you do some tricks, you do this, you do that. There's no like story driven component to it that we can actually go into great depth and detail about. Like yeah, from I the want guy who still plays Rocket League and Warzone all the time. Not all the time. I am tackling a lot. Dude, look at my freaking thing on PlayStation. Look at the games I've been tackling. Oh, let me? me just fire up my PlayStation Four and take a look at it. <laughs> you dumb fuck, loser. No, you can look at your app. If you are about to suggest that I open a web browser just to look at what you're doing on video games... You're telling me I, you can't open a PlayStation app? I can do a lot of things. I just will not do them. I figured. Like, stalk your fucking activity. Oh, I do. I st- dude, I stalk yours all the time. <laughs> That's why I know what kind of you're fucking weird-ass weird games you're playing. Dude, you're don't... Weird, don't don't give me that shit, okay? I fucking caught you playing Mr. Massage, okay? Just fucking own up if to you it. you would have asked, I would have said yes. Yeah, okay. I wanted the trophies. I know you did. I know that. I know that's why you're playing these shit little games. Well, like pool. Beat. I love pool. That's a fun game. And not easy trophies. It came to starting to piss me off. Is it really? <laughs> oh, it gets it really gets pretty hard. Oh well. Anyway. What like because anyway. here's because here, okay I guess the main reason I ask is because I've now given you a couple games that are like again pretty heavy story driven that we I feel like have plenty of talking points we can go over that I'm just mm-hmm. hoping you will play at some point in the near future. Yeah, I will at some point in the near future, but I don't. You are impatient and sometimes annoying. In impatient. That I'm not going to have a game system until November. And actually, yeah. probably not even then. It's going to be sold out. You, oh, you didn't go for the... You didn't look into pre-orders? No. I, I mean, mean, I, I did, but nothing's been available. Oh, okay. Because I was like, at this point, why the fuck not look for a pre-order? Like, you know you're going to well, get I it. Just, I just don't have the cash currently. Oh, okay. All right, Damn everybody. We're putting up, a, we're putting up a GoFundMe. <laughs> just, uh, you know, sharing up some other financial aspects of my life right now. There you go. Dude, speaking of he fucking did. Michael Myers really quick, I actually do want to give a quick shout out. Mike Myers. Uh, no, the guy I want to shout out is Michael Myers. Or Michael the Meyer, murderer? I should say. Uh, no, oh. Michael Meyer. He is the host of the On Call podcast. Um, we've got, I've, I've been talking with him quite a bit on Twitter. Uh, he's a video game guy and stuff, but I wanted to tell you really quick. He commented, or no, he, he sent me a message from, so he listened to our last episode. And mm-hmm. he uh, he gave me he sent me a message saying, oh, I really appreciated hearing Waukesha, uh, you know, cheers or something like that. Because he, like he was originally from Wisconsin. He actually let's see. He said he 
he grew up and lived in Hillsboro, which I want to say Wait, is more. We were talking about Waukesha specifically. Well, so no, 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 no. So I brought it up. I said the city specifically. So when we brought up the whole talking point about southeastern Wisconsin, everything's like 15, 30 minutes away. I was like, oh, how far away is Waukesha? Yeah. Like, oh, 15 minutes. Oh, okay. So I said it. And then so he was listening to our episode and he heard that. So with him now living in Florida, he's kind of like me where he like obviously used to be from Wisconsin. And like it was kind of weird, too. Like I, I understood what he said. Like when you start hearing people talk, like when you send me stuff from TMJ4 or Fox 6 or whatever, and I start reading about, like, Waukesha or Delafield or, Mano- or like, whatever, it, it is kind of cool to have, like, that, oh, yeah, like, these cities still are around, and I'm just not there anymore to be around them. Mm-hmm. So he, he just kind of sent me that message. It was kind of cool how he's just like, oh, yeah, I miss, I kind of miss the old, uh, the old, the old Wisconsin area. And I was like, oh, hell yeah, dude. I've been trying I'm to find a way. We got it, uh, dude. Honestly, we have been talking, and I we got to have. We, we're going to have guests on at some point, and I know he's going to be one of them. I just got to get him on. He's yeah. a he's more of an Xbox guy though, so like, not everybody's cool, I guess. But Mike, if you're listening, yeah. But big news today: Xbox purchased Bethesda. Did Soft they works. really? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, so I, I like I saw it and I was like, okay, good to know. But then everybody's just like speculating about all the stuff that means. It's just like, Ugh. do you think that I mean, means? Do you think that means we'll no. have five more editions of Skyrim? Oh yes, people are making that joke. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's like Skyrim for fucking ever. <laughs> Dude, honestly, like, like I think at this point Bethesda should just keep running with it. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me clarify and sure up my statement. Okay. Microsoft purchased Bethesda, not okay. Xbox. Okay. Um, regardless. Uh, yeah, so wow. all the titles like, you know, Doom, um, Fallout, Elder Scrolls, uh, Wolfenstein, all that jazz. Holy cow. Um, I think Wolfenstein. Uh, uh, but, so, hopefully it doesn't delay Elder Scrolls 6. I mean, yeah. I don't. I, gonna... I don't have any anticipation that that they're going to make it a uh, Xbox exclusive game because that would be really stupid. Uh, I, honest, now I would not be surprised. That would be really disheartening for me. Because now think about it. This is this is now Microsoft potentially thinking to themselves: Could we now jump? In, could could they make that leap? that Sony has done so greatly with their exclusives and start making that their exclusives. Oh, fuck, dude. So titles they like might. Doom and Elder Scrolls and Fallout Just think about it. go to have, exclusive to Xbox. Think about it. If they had those and claimed those as their exclusives, th- absolutely they'd be now up there with Sony and their exclusives. Are you kidding me? They'd surpass Sony in my book. Exactly. Those are three of my favorite franchises ever. Dude, they might. I could, I could totally see it. I could totally see them doing that, no doubt. Wow, holy shit, that would be nutty. It's a risk versus benefit, though. I mean, because yeah, obviously, then you have those titles, but then there are people who aren't going to buy two systems, so you're going to lose sure. people who bought games. Oh, for sure. And again, that I guess that's the kind of thing they have to to play out is how much you- of. How much of them trying to keep up with Sony are they willing to sacrifice for people who won't get two systems? When you don't make money off hardware, you make money off games. Right. So, but, see, but I think that's they the would thing, actually like, it would likely behoove them to still sell it to all consoles. Sure. I just like because to, to me, like I, again, I guess that's the thing they have to play out is because you know that and that's the thing if they made it exclusive you still know that doom's gonna sell fallout's gonna sell like elder scrolls like all these games all these exclusives if they were to do it would sell no doubt but i mean like would you get a second would you get the cheaper xbox or no probably but i feel like most people aren't in a position to be able to do that oh for sure so you know what i mean like that's Right. I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. $1,000 for video games, more or less. <sighs> Man, I that's crazy. Just, I mean, I get, I don't, th- I mean, you think about it logically, probably not, but just to think well, that's that the thing, like, potential. Well, it isn't a secret. Right. Like, Sony has said this. I'm sure Microsoft says it. They sell their consoles at a loss. Like how we were talking about last week with the oh, inf- right. inflation or lack thereof of the consoles. Mm-hmm. 
but the clear technologic advancements, like they're not making money on the consoles. So I no. don't think they would do it in order to try to sell more consoles when they could just sell more uh, games. Being but, to but PlayStation. 4. What I did read is like obviously they make up for it though with with now what they're doing, like the Xbox Game Pass and Sony's got their PlayStation Plus. So that's how they make up for their losses is they charge people for those things. Yeah. So again, though, it, but I wouldn't see. That's the thing, though, is I wouldn't do that. I don't need anything online from Microsoft after the game. So, but but like if I those games are going good. exclusively to Xbox, though. No, I, I would need Game Pass. I'd oh, but see now, but that that's the thing, though, is from your cost and benefit of it. Would you then go out and get the big Xbox for four ninety nine that you can play? the discs on or do you get the cheaper one for two hundred dollars less and then just get game pass i don't know see because now you have to start thinking to yourself what it's only one hundred dollars less i thought it was 499 and 299 i thought it was the same as playstation isn't playstation 499 and 399 yeah i thought the, they were the, same. the smaller xbox was 299 i thought double check me but i'm almost positive i'm looking right now I swear, I thought it was. I mean, again, maybe I, I very well could be wrong. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin in my soul. Okay, you're right. I am right? Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, my God. All right, yeah. So, so that, now again, that's so that's $200 cheaper. Yeah, that's fairly significant. <sighs> Let's just hope it doesn't come to that, eh? <laughs> a. I mean, again, for me, I'll be okay with it. Like, I, the only other big purchase I'm looking to do in terms of the video game realm, other than a PS5 at some point, which, by the way, will not be happening until this PS4 does exactly what yours does. I'm running this what thing if into it the... never does that. <laughs> then you know what. I'll I'll keep going until eventually I get to the point where I just I have to switch. Like if it's to the point where we're at in this podcast where where there's so many games out and it has to be on PS5, then fine. Whenever that time comes, I'll do it. <laughs> Basically, like literally every other system that's ever come out in the history of our friendship, that's what I'll do. I mean, that's fine. That's what I would. Uh, that's what I would do too if I were you. So. Uh, just at this point, I like I said. When we were talking about this, I'm so surprised that you're you've gone through two, and I had a used one that's still active. Again, I, I'm just gonna run it till it dies, till it completely just breaks, and that's it. Because then the like I said, the only other big console purchase that I'm looking to do though is the Switch. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Teague and I have been talking about it because Teague's also had an interest in getting it, so we kind of want to get it for the two of us. Um, yeah, Nintendo Switch. Um, I will see. Here's the. Oh, sorry, I keep bumping my microphone. Sorry, everybody. Um, yeah, fucking. I wanted to get. What's that? I said, yeah, you better fucking apologize. Uh, I was gonna plan to get the VR for the PlayStation Five. Oh. You know, if they come up with like a VR type version two or whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. See now, that's the only. Now I have to buy a fucking Xbox too. That's we'll see. Here's the thing I've been concerned about though is will the current PlayStation VR transfer over to the five? Let's and that's the thing. I was just gonna wait until they release a new one. Right. Now, but thinking about it, I think it should. If the ports are there, Uh, have they ever said anything? I no. That's the thing. I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah, that's weird. Which makes me like 50 50, concerned, not concerned. Because part of me thinks, oh, they're not saying anything because there's going to be no switch. Given. Yeah. yeah. Or they're not saying anything because they don't know yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little, a little on edge because that would really suck. We're living on the edge. Seriously. Um,. But no, I, the other thing too is I, uh, Teague and I this weekend went to the mall. And have you, uh, do you know what Think Geek is? Have you ever heard of that store? I've purchased uh, an item or two off of Think Geek. Okay. So you know that it's basically a branch of GameStop? 
It is now. It didn't used to be, but yeah. It didn't used to be, but it is now. Correct. Um, so we were going in there because I was looking to get some more Funko Pops for my collection. And they had sure. like this big buy two, get one free deal. Um, so Teague actually has started to collect some too, and I kind of got her hooked on it. Um, but I, pre- I did actually a pre-order for a Funko Pop, believe it or not, uh, Interesting. for Joel from The Last of Us. We're all shocked. Ha <laughs> ah, ha! They think it's funny. No, yeah. Uh, everybody's pretty surprised. Uh, yeah. No, it's. Um, it was kind of funny because so like the Funko Pop itself, I think, was for the pre-order for like a brand new one was like twelve bucks, I think. But the funny part though is the the girl at the counter said, um, for the pre-order, you can put down either the full price or or five dollars was the minimum you could put down. And I thought to myself, what? Like who? I mean, that's how it was for games at GameStop back in the day. Sure, but now how much is a typical game though? Like sixty bucks, right? Sixty bucks, yeah. Correct. So that's a pretty decent amount of now. For instance, if you're like a younger kid, for example, like I'm thinking about this from the point of like a fourteen, fifteen year old. Like sixty bucks, like damn, that's a lot of lawns to mow. But like thirteen or twelve dollars, like I'm pretty sure that's like half of a lawn, depending on who you're probably working for. So I'm thinking to myself. Why would you just put down like why not just pay for the whole fucking thing? What you what finance game stuff to get in your fucking product? I don't know. <laughs> what financial hole are you in that you're like 13? Whoa, time out. Let's just do five for right now. That's all I can afford until this product comes out. I don't know. <laughs> I just say like it was just it was just really funny to me that they were like on on a thirteen dollar twelve dollar purchase, you could only put down five if you so choose, based on your financial situation. Hey, I yeah, but at the same time though, I understand not wanting to pay any more than you have to before before you get the actual product. Oh sure, I, 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 and again, I, I understand that, but I like like again, like I said, to me it was just funny that like somebody would look at twelve dollars and go, holy shit. And especially nowadays, I'd be like, yeah, fuck you. Like, I am waiting until I get that thing until I give you any more money. Well, that's fair. They said that they they told me that once it got in, they would, like, call me or whatever, send me an email, and then I could just go pick it up. Yeah, yeah. That's actually where I got Chance, believe it or not. Chance the Rapper. No, 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 no. You're going to confuse people. Ah. That's a, no. Tell them, tell them who we're talking about and don't you dare ever disrespect chance like that again hand a chance chance the gila monster yes the were... f- for all you that do not know he is the golden knights mascot vegas golden knights our favorite team nate schmidt what's up man thanks for listening again um well, yeah we forgot to talk about hockey oh yeah let's quickly all right let's well let's say yeah, let's do our quick little quick little segment um golden knights are out darn I'm not watching the finals. Um, I haven't watched a second of it. All I all I saw, I, I, I was like, I went to bed the other night and I told Teague, I'm like, all right, I want to turn on the Stanley Cup play. Because it was like the end of the game. So I knew it was like getting towards the end. So I'm like, I just want to see what the score was. Turned it on. Sure enough, fucking Jamie Ben's getting an interview from Pierre. And I'm like, they fucking won? Stars yeah, won dude. game one. Kud- Kudobin is going to win that fucking series for them. <sighs> No, but I... yeah, he's playing out of his gourd. I know he's playing JSG material. Yeah, and I don't like that though because nobody should be compared to him. Nobody. Interesting yet... though that JSG played that way against Dallas, and now we're talking about Hudobin, who's on Dallas. Oh my God, Illuminati. <laughs> That, you know what? That's what's being hidden from us. That's it. It all makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> all of a sudden, our feed, our power just gets cut at our houses. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, for those of you who do not know, JSG is John Sebastian Jaguar. Uh, he was the uh, goalie for the Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Mighty Ducks. I want to make sure to emphasize that because that they was when their so name was fucking, fucking cool for their current fucking chain where they wanted to be a little more mature. That's, that's you know, that's a little what, less mature in my opinion. Exactly. That's like, like, come on. Don't. 
Don't be the yeah. Don't be the guy who like does like the trendy. Thing. Like, always want to be a little a little different, a little more mature. No, just fucking be cool. Nothing wrong with being. That's cool. what made you cool. Exactly. Paul Korea, Timo Solani, JSG. Like fuck out of here. Um, Scott Niedermeyer. Oh my god, Scott Niedermeyer, Jesus. Um. Anyway, so Josh Vashnagir was the goalie for the Ducks, and he was one of the only players in NHL history to win the playoff MVP and not be on the Stanley Cup winning team. Because was the he ever. was a boss. Dude, he seriously, that entire postseason was the JSG show. And he was in the cup final against Martin Brodeur. Oh, you don't have to tell me twice. Like, he was going up against Hall of Fame est competition. But best goaltender <sighs> of all time. Yeah, I mean, yeah. No no arguments from Josh. You'll never hear it again. See, and that's the thing. Like it's he is the best. Right? Oh. Just like like I say, Tom Brady is the best. Mm-hmm. But if you want the most skilled for one game, mm-hmm. take the take the player at their peak. Yes, I would take Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, but... Can, can we... Wait, what? I've always... I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. For, like I'm just, a whole game based I on just, skill? I just want you. I just, I just wanted you to say it again. Oh, I, j- just based on skill, by the way. Because mm-hmm. if we're talking about leadership and mounting a comeback and oh. everything, there's a lot of other variables that come right, in. Right, right, right. And Brady, Brady's your fucking guy. Purely skill-based, but, though. Yeah. You take Rodgers... If you're just like who has the best arm, best accuracy, mm-hmm. uh, best movement in the pocket, stuff like that, you take Rodgers. And if you're like, I need some motherfucker who's going to play top of his game for one game, game seven, you're taking Patrick Waugh. Rodur is the greatest because like he did it at a consistent level for like 85 years. Serious, 90 actually. Waugh didn't play as long. He doesn't have those records, but I still mm-hmm. think he was a better goaltender. Just like yeah. here, just like this, just like Jerry Rice. You can call mm-hmm. him the greatest wide receiver of all time. Mm-hmm. Randy Moss is still better than Jerry Rice. Oh, for sure. He had a shit attitude. He was on crap teams. Well, like that's Jerry, one, like that's one way to, to be put fair. It. Jerry to be, Rice. To be fair. To be fair. Jerry Rice had fucking Joe Montana and Steve Young thrown to him most of his career. Yeah. I mean, and again, Jerry Rice did you, it consistently. Basically, you just have to be like halfway decent, and you'll be a good receiver. Even when Jerry Rice got shipped off to the Raiders. He had Rich Gannon, who was also very good at the time. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So that's very true. Yeah, I just, I, it's a I, distinction. You know? I know. I and again, to me, like <laughs> again, I I can't diss on Wa, but yeah, I I I know what you mean though. And honestly, I think if it came to Game Seven for me personally, if I had to choose between the two of them, it'd be a coin flip. Because again, to me, I just feel like Broder can also show up, like at both at their peaks. But I just, I don't know. It's honestly, I'm not, I'm not doing it just because I favor one over the other. I'm just, like truly down the middle with these two. Yeah, I think you get more intangible. Yeah, out of Wa. See, you and know, I, like and, he'll, and here's he'll the thing: wink at you after he stones you, dude. Oh my god, best Sports Illustrated cover ever. That made the cover Sports Illustrated? I actually don't quote me on that. I think it did. Part of me like thinks it did, but part of me thinks it may have just been on another magazine or something. Hmm. I guess I don't like I said, don't quote me. I might be horrifically wrong. But for some reason I thought that that had made it or something. Well, let me check. And while you check, you see, well, I was just going to say that with our partners that you mentioned in the very beginning, Podgo, um, they actually had messaged me, I think I told you this, where they want us to do Melting the Ice, like to make a separate segment for everybody. I, like 15 minutes, like that's, we could do that. I was about to say, dude, like what we just what we just busted out with like another, I don't know, 10 minutes of just recapping. And then the other thing too is I'm thinking if we started this within the NHL season, we'll have way more to talk about like recapping games oh who's yeah. looking good who's looking bad and just now we're quick. just doing it to justify tagging nate schmidt every week and seriously that's and that's that shows it now if we do like a full separate segment we'll be like dude check out our hockey podcast after you listen to our video game podcast the only uh sports illustrated cover that i'm seeing is after the avalanche won the cup and it's Wah grabbing a glove save oh okay. obviously in the avalanche 
<laughs> right. Okay. Then maybe I saw it. Maybe it was like a frozen picture or something that someone had put up on a screen or something. I did, maybe I yeah. just threw passing. But either way, if anybody doesn't know, there was a game that was when he was on the Canadians, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, where he just he was so in the zone and so stoning everybody that he actually winked. At, at a guy after making a save. I forgot who it was, yeah. I forgot who it was, too. It was like the third or fourth time he stoned him, too. It was like a raw, like a stone-cold robbery of a save. And he just looked up at him and winked through his mask. And whoever was filming should probably also get an award of some kind. It's like the clearest picture I've ever seen. Yeah. The guy just so happened to be like, all right, let's just like zoom in on Wa here and stay there, stay there. Oh, my God. And then probably as soon as he did that, everyone in the fucking video room just freaked out. We did it! We got the coolest clip ever. Hot 1993, damn. it looks like. Was that one that was? Yeah. Oh my god. At Tomas Sandstrom. That's so long ago. Kings. Close up in the 1993 Stanley Cup final. Wow. The year I was born. <sighs> I was probably in my mom's belly still. I most certainly Probably. was. I most certainly was. Okay, okay. It's cool, man. Just nine months. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was. All right, just enough. Leave it. That's it. Go to your room. I didn't do anything. See, that's what they all say. I didn't do anything. Go to your room. Think about it. Sick of your attitude. Dude, okay, really quick. Actually, now that I thought about this, I have been meaning to talk about this game for a while now. Like, a while. And I still, I always keep forgetting. Because we're going to be yeah. here for a while. A what? Why, wait, why do you say it like that? <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a game called Erica. Have you heard of this? No. It's a free PS Plus game, I want to say, two months ago? Two, three months ago, something like that. It's So it's basically a telltale game in terms of decision making. But... Okay. It's full live action. So it's like a full movie filmed with real humans and real actors. And you make decisions on the screen only with your dual sense touchpad. And that's like the game. Then you make like decisions based on that. Hmm. But like, the, like I said, the game is full like people. Like there's no computer whatsoever. I've, I'm just, I, I just don't know how I haven't heard about this. I, that's the thing. I I keep forgetting to talk about it. I'm so pissed. Well, that's it was, interesting. It was a it's a Sony exclusive. Um, I mean, again, I'm glad I was for PS Plus. I mean, I would never. It, it's not very like the story itself is kind of confusing and weird. But I think they're more just going for the experimental use of it. Like, hey, let's just try this new game out. Um, but yeah, it was just so bizarre because I looked up like I was like, oh, what's this? erica game and i played a trailer for it and i'm like what hmm. and it was like yeah live people i was like this is just really weird well it sounds like uh command and conquer which had like live videos or not live videos but uh videos oh. of real people talking you know but yeah but then didn't it like cut to an actual video game though? Yeah, yeah 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 okay but no, yeah, like this is, yeah, like I said, this is full, like you're walking around and she walks up to something and you can just go like, pick this or this. And then like, she's talking and then like, do you, what do you want to answer with this, this or this? Huh? It's really, really, really bizarre. It is bizarre. Like I said, this story was kind of confusing, but I don't know if people, yeah, like I said, it's called Erica. It's just got like her on the cover. If you're so what up. are you going to do? Are you going to play it? I played through it. I played through the whole thing. Like I said, the How story. Like I said, the story. Uh, I don't know. It was kind of hard to follow at first because, like, I understand what they were going for, like the shock value of like some twists and turns in the story. But it was just like it was kind of hard. It was kind of confusing. You're kind of like, where did this come from? And like, why is they? Why are they doing this or something? Like, sure. there's. Um, the trophy lineup is basically like in order to get a full platinum on the game, you have to play through it like at least three or four times because you have, the the trophies are based on decision making. So yeah. you have to go back and like pick Do this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but still, like the over like I kind of got what was going on. It was it was kind of like a weird cult like 
control thing or whatever, and you have to uncover who kills your father and blah blah blah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. It was just I, like I said. I think it was just more of Sony being like, "All right, let's just let's just try this." It was something. I'll tell you that it wasn't bad, but it was just it was just it was, I don't know. It's just an experience. So interesting. It was, yeah. It really was. Like I said, I'd love was, to play that. Let me just fire up my oh fuck you. <laughs> it's so funny how you insult yourself more than I. I like. I don't bring it up because I'm like I don't want to piss him off. <laughs> I appreciate that. And like I'm like I genuinely know you're hurting inside, so I'm like I won't say it, and you're just like Haha, fuck me. I'm like I didn't even say anything. God. <laughs> God. <laughs> Constantly ripping on yourself. Well, here, I will talk about something then that you probably don't mind. Um, we talked about this a little bit briefly. I uh, On Steam, I finally got my Civ 6 to work. Civ yep. Myers, Civilization 6, for all you who don't know. Uh, for the longest time, it was the weirdest thing. I downloaded it onto my current laptop, and it's graphically something was amiss. I don't know what it was, but like I'd start playing for a few minutes, and the whole screen would just like... Burr. <laughs> so I was like, "What? Like, what is going on?" So I think something—I don't know what—but there was some update that either Microsoft did or my computer did or something, where now I'm able to run it, no problem. Um, but like I told you, Josh, I think five way better than six. Wait, I thought you said six is better than five. No, 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 reverse it. If I, if I did say that, I apologize, but I'm pretty sure I said five is better than six. Oh, I, I guess I don't know. I read it as six is better than five. That's why I said, like, really? Oh. And then you gave, like, a big explanation. And you're oh. like, yeah, the culture thing is different. And I was like, oh, okay, it sounds like it's better. Oh, I well, no, well in my example, though, I, I gave two reasons as to why five was better. And then they said, however, six has blah, blah, blah. I can understand where the confusion was, though. I know I, that was. I know. Was I think cool. I was like doing some chores too while you That's said, while I was reading that. And plus, if you're reading it, you'll see a V and a VI that can blend together. That can yeah. mesh very, very easily. Honestly, <laughs> so now that funny. two games that Civilization that came out after five mm-hmm. that have not been as good as five. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. The what the one you got the the alien Beyond one? Earth. Beyond yeah. Earth, yeah. I, I the, like I said, the thing about the thing I really like about Five actually that I actually found out I was kind of playing again and I really enjoyed this. And I don't know why, but in the early Civilization games and then in Six, they make the leaders all kind of seem a little cartoony. Like they kind of give them not like unreal. Wait, you said they do do that in Five? In Six, they do. Oh, I was. They're kind of cartoony in Five, don't you think? Yes, but not as drastically. Like okay. in, if you look at the if you look at the earlier games and you look at how they did it in six, you can kind of tell there's some like clear cartoony type animation they put into it. But I feel like in five they really keep it rather tame in terms of trying to keep them like what they were like actually humane wise. Um, you have to go back and like look at the two. If you actually like looked at gameplay from six and looked at five, you would know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, but no, like I said, the thing that I the thing that I liked about five is just how they kept it rather simple. I think the mods were better. In six, the only thing I liked them that they did well is when you look at the tiles you have around a city, they actually make you like, oh, do you want to build X big monument where you're gonna take up this whole tile to do it? You don't get to just shove everything into that little tile that is your city, so to speak. Okay, I think I follow that. Which I like, though, because it makes you actually think, like, okay, I have to have right, resources. Exactly. Yeah. Like, you can go look out in a farm field and be like, well, do I need the resources, or can I put a monument here? So, makes sense. I do like that. It makes it, it gives you it gives you a little more thought, a little more insight on, like, what you should do strategically and all that stuff. Strategery. But... Yeah, you get it. You get it. In my opinion, if I were you, if you see six on some like crazy deal on Steam, like well, I, I almost say, got it on PlayStation Four. Oh, really? Yeah, it's, it's been in my cart a couple times. Do you think? Uh, pull the trigger. 
I wonder if they have crossover action. I don't remember if I read anything about that or not. I probably not. Probably not. It has to run a lot differently, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. But I don't know. That's just me. I would say this, though. If you see it either in the PlayStation Store or on Steam, in my opinion, 20 or less. Go for it. Anything above that, in my opinion, I don't think it's worth it. Yeah, that's fair. Just to me. I mean, again, if you want to get it for 30 and you think it's worth it, by all means. Probably not. I mean, I... I probably won't. How about you just play some of the free games that your boy Zach's gotten you? On what? Oh, see what I did there? You're such a cock. Like, you (laughs) did that for everyone to hear. (laughs) Hey, you kept throwing jabs at yourself, so finally I had to throw one. I wanted to get it it in the party. (laughs) No way for me. Oh, but no, God. for real though, I think, in my opinion, I've been waiting for you for the longest time to play Days Gone, so I think you should do that once you get your five. Uh, Yeah, I mean, that's on there. Okay, so here are the physical titles I have that justify financially getting the full uh, PlayStation 5 with optical drive Ooh. that I haven't played. Mm-hmm. Spider-Man. Finishing Borderlands The Handsome Collection. Mm-hmm. Days Gone, Spyro Reignited Trilogy, nice. Titanfall Two, Red Dead Redemption Two, nice. And We Happy Few. Oh, and you're really forgetting weird, one. Really weird how those uh, all rhymed. Oh, and uh, Jedi Fallen Order. You're welcome. So that's like uh, probably like three, four hundred bucks <laughs> worth of games there. Easy. Easy. And just and this is just physical unplayed games. So yeah, I gotta get the fucking Jesus. Between freaking Red Dead, uh Jedi, and uh Days Gone, and what was the other there was another one in there. Well there were many. Um um oh, well just between those three, you're looking at close to like over a hundred bucks. Well, for those three you're looking at a hundred and eighty bucks. Really? Well, sixty times three. Oh well, I'm 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 banking that if you could probably find them for under sixty by now. Well, I could, but if if you're looking at like, I mean, sure, like Red Dead, I'm sure you could. Like my thought was Red Dead, I'm sure you could still find for like thirty nine ninety nine. I still think they're selling Jedi for about forty, even maybe fifty. Um, yeah. And then Days Gone, I've seen at a pretty decent discount, but again. Still, like, I'm still so fucking surprised that that fell so far under the radar. Like, that game got announced and everyone I think they hyped it, it too early. Yeah, maybe. Because I remember when it when it did come out, everyone was like, oh my god, like, a zombie yeah. game that could... that Because I remember they, they promoted it, zombie, and then they talked about it in detail, saying open world. And they were like, mm-hmm. everyone was like, oh my god, like, this could compete with The Last of Us being open world, blah, blah, blah. And then it came out and everyone was just like, what? Oh yeah, yeah. Days gone. Yeah. And I was like, "What? Like, how did? How the fuck did people just forget about this?" Honestly, though, it's like they did. I think it's just too early. You know, I, I'm still banking. You're gonna love that game. Yeah, we'll find out. Because you're an open world guy. I think between the two of us, you're much more of an open world guy. More, more open world guy than I am. No, oh, for sure. Because you love exploring. I like to explore. That's what you do. You yelled at me so many times for not doing it. That's true. I saw, dude. What do you want? I, I, I. For me, I love like a book. I love going from end. I know there's a beginning, middle, and end. It makes me feel good. It makes me know that I can get through it. Done. Open world. Like sometimes it's overwhelming. That is understandable. Like I just, you know, I'm like I, I do want to get to the story, but I'm like, oh, but then there's this storyline. That's fun. That's cool. And it's like, well, then there's this one. And I'm like, ah. Fuck. All right, really quick though, really quick. I know we're getting low on time here, um, but before we go, we do need to talk about our next and final final four matchup. As I'm looking at the standings right now, I gotta tell you, dude, Mario Kart 64, they're punching their ticket. Oh, punching their ticket to the championship match. Unless, unless in probably the next, let's see here, in the next 
uh, next 25 minutes, which everyone's going to buy. It's already going to be gone by the time people listen to this. Um, in the next 25 minutes, if Super Smash Bros. can pull out like 30 votes out of nowhere, Mario Kart's <sighs> taking it. Maybe, though. It's a blowout, dude. It's honestly a pretty big blowout. The percentages, it's right now 20, uh, 28 votes, I think. 25 votes currently on um, Twitter. Let's see here. 75% of the vote has gone to Mario Kart. 76. Yeah, I'm not terribly surprised, if I'm being honest. People love them. People love Mario Kart, man. Yeah. But now... The true matchup, I think this is the one everyone's been waiting for. I think the first one was kind of just like, all right. Like, the first one was that 3 o'clock game that everyone was like, oh, yeah, we'll watch because, you know, it's Final Four. But now we're getting to the primetime 8 o'clock tip-off. Oh, yeah. Super Mario 64 taking on, in my opinion, still the utmost complete underdog in 007, GoldenEye. Yeah, I don't know how you haven't come to terms with that yet. I, I don't think I ever will. And again, I'm not, again, I want to make this very clear. I'm not saying it's an underdog because of the game not being like popular or anything. I'm strictly saying because of the road the game had to take to get to the final four. Yeah, I see what you mean. I, I truly so did it's not, not that they're think... an underdog because yes. an underdog implies they were a bad team. Sorry. Not that they're, they're they themselves are an underdog of the fact that the teams that they have beaten basically, in my opinion, the games they've gone up against have made them underdogs. If that makes yeah. sense. Like in my head, I thought, "Wow, Red Dead Goldeneye, dude! I'm pretty sure Red Dead probably has this one locked up." Or like Elder yes. Scrolls Oblivion, The Last of Us. Then once it honestly, once it got to place uh, up against Mortal Kombat, I was like, "Yeah, no chance for Mortal Kombat on this one." Right, right. right, right. <laughs> okay. But now before we go, Josh, who do you got? Do you have a Mario Mario 64 final? Or will Golden Eye keep riding this ridiculous train of beating teams that are games that probably shouldn't? It's gonna be Golden Eye. You done. think so? I think so. My 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 mind's telling me like my heart's telling my me, mind's telling me no. Yes. I could not pass that up. Sorry. I know. No, I, that's fair. I honestly was about to do it as well, but I was like, I don't want to, I didn't know if we had to pay royalties or not. I don't think we do. <laughs> uh, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> that's when we know we've made it. Um, <laughs> um, like, okay. Truthfully, my mind's telling me like, Hey dude, be smart. Go with the obvious choice here in golden eye. But my heart's like, come on, man. Super Mario 64. First, like, big open world s game. I mean, it's Mario. Like, people love, truly, as it's you a can him, tell. It's Mario. Mario, people, people, like, sex sells. Mario sells. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't even know, dude. The fuck? That, <laughs> okay, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't even know, dude. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. I just don't know, dude. We'll decide. I, I think I'm, I'm just going to oppose you. I want to go Super Mario 64 just to keep it keep it interesting. Such a contrarian, dude. Wouldn't that? Yeah, that's oh, that's going to be such a crazy matchup. Crazy. So why? So why do you think GoldenEye is going to win really quick? Just give me a brief oh, what you, momentum. Yeah, that's so what you think. Just just care, keep yeah. carrying it. <laughs> yeah, I have no other no other justification other than that because I think Mario is better, but. No doubt. Golden Sometimes Eyes, you just gotta smell the roses. Golden no Eye doubt is a powerhouse. Golden Eyes in the locker room right now, and their coach is like, "Guys, we're playing with house money here. Let's just let's just go out and do what we do. Let's give her all she's got. Let's just take that golden gun, put it right to that little Italian motherfucker's head, blow him back down that pipe." What? <laughs> he was Italian. I don't know Mario, isn't he? Oh, I thought you were talking about in Golden Eye. Oh no. And I was like, I don't remember any Italian bad guys. Uh, well, I'm sure there probably was one at some. Oh point. yeah, no, Mario's Italian. Yeah, he's so from gonna Sicily. Take, they're gonna take the golden. They're gonna take the golden gun and one shot him. Yeah. Pew. Unless Mario Done. hits him with that fireball. 
Got to get the marshmallow first, though. He's got to get or it's not, not marshmallow. <laughs> He's got to get two mushrooms first, though. Marshmallow. Um, or no, he needs a mushroom and a, a flower. Sorry, go ahead. You know what's funny though is so a golden eye is one shot, one kill. A kill would imply that you are removing one life. So if Mario is Uh-oh. in big form, shoot him once when he's at normal size, shrinks down to small size, gut punch. <laughs> James Bond's down. Because we all know it's in fucking possible to aim in Goldeneye, so go ahead and tell me you're gonna try to aim down at little Mario when he's blooping around down there. I don't fucking think so. Yeah, all of a sudden, bing, 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 you're dead. <laughs> he just jumps on your head once. Then he, then, he, then he puts you on your back and he shoots you all the way down to the wherever. Could you imagine, like, little Mario just, like, between your legs doing a little coin punch to your fucking coin purse? <laughs> bing, 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 bing. That would fucking hurt, hey? Oh, fuck Nichols! <laughs> All right, it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> we're we're past time now. We're past time. All right, everybody. Yeah, we're getting the the signal from the booth that we got to wrap it up here. Sorry about that. Um, this week we're doing a little promo shout out. We're actually back to the back to the top of the rotation for our promo drops. So we're gonna shout out to uh, Fat Drunk and Stupid this week. Check them out. We've promoted them before. I mean, I think the title. Speaks for itself, for what you're getting. You know what I mean? Not hiding anything. All right, Josh. Anything else? Got nothing. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning Say in. Goodbye. And we'll talk to you next time. Slancho. Hey, folks. Rob here from Fat, Drunk, and Stupid. And what is that you ask? Well, aside from three words that describe my life, it's a podcast. We talk about food, fun, fellowship, movies, books, video games, pop culture, and much more. Also, some very interesting guests and some awesome stories. And, of course, some cold beers along the way, too. So look us up on Twitter at FDS Podcast 7 and look for Fat, Drunk, and Stupid wherever you find your favorite podcast. Thanks for listening.